Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, a neighbor despised my wheelchair ramp and hates disabled people in general. He ended up getting so upset over my ramp that he destroyed my property with his truck. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. So I am a disabled man, I don't try to hide it nor am I ashamed of it. I have not been disabled my whole life, but I have long since accepted it as a way of life for me and I refuse to let anyone make me feel like less of a human when I can still pursue and experience life. I just might need an alternative to stairs sometimes. My particular disability means that I don't have use of my legs, so I use a wheelchair to get around. So because of this, when I moved into a new home, I needed to get a wheelchair ramp installed. Especially since the front door of my chosen home was on a raised patio. I first arrived and had to be carried up the steps by a friend of mine in order to tour the house. And then, as soon as I decided to buy the home, I had plans to get the ramp built. However, I needed to move in before the project was set in motion. I had my friend come again to carry me up the steps to my home, but this time we had a special audience. My next door neighbor, a douchebag neighbor, DN for short, decided it was worth his time to stand at the edge of his yard and stare at me. He looked at me like I was the crooked ref keeping his favorite team from being great. He finally let the anger out of his scrunched up face. I was worried that he was gonna burst if he held it much longer. You filthy disabled person. It's disgusting that you keep that grin on your face while you ruin this neighborhood's image. Do you want people to think that we let in any freeloading waste of oxygen? We'll be overrun. My friend's face registered shock and realistically, if he hadn't been halfway through carrying my wheelchair up the stairs, he probably would have snapped back at the end. I shook my head when he looked at me though and then replied, it is an awfully productive way to spend your time standing and watching a man move into his house without even the decency to offer help. Douchebag neighbor hawked up a loogie and spit into my yard. Why would I help tarnish this good neighborhood? If you stand and help the men who fight and die overseas to keep you free, then maybe. While here you are, probably making someone else wipe your ass with the freedoms given to you by others. I'll just stay in my yard and mind my own business. My friend had made it up the steps and was just about to jump down Dian's throat, but I waved him back. I said, have you surfed? Dian said, no, but I tried to make the nation they protect a better place rather than dragging it down by leeching off the honest taxpayer's dollar. I let him rant and rave a little more as I climbed into my wheelchair. Then I said, I can wipe my own ass by the way. The arms still work just fine. To prove it, I rolled away from him and went inside. On the way, I reminded my friend to put up the security cameras in good spots. I told him, I just know that idiot is gonna make a fool of himself before too much longer. Everything was moved in and I was taking my time to unpack over the next week. I had made good progress and most things were out and starting to be organized. The supplies for the wheelchair ramp build had been shipped. I was out in the yard telling the delivery guy where to leave the building supplies when DN showed up again. He had done his best to harass me anytime I was visible beyond the threshold of my home. It was certainly annoying but I knew that eventually the guy would have to tire himself out. He was like a dog humping a lawn ornament, he could get all the enjoyment he wanted out of it but if he got nothing in return it would become too much work. He decided that he would tell the delivery guy that he could carry all the supplies for him and all he had to do was get it of the truck. Now this seemed like too much fast of a turnaround when last time he had spoken to me, he had told me that no one in the world actually wanted to do any of the extra work needed to keep a disabled person around. He implied that it would be better if I stopped breathing so people didn't have to push me around all the time. So he encourages the delivery guy to go, he shows him his little car to prove that he has a way to carry all the heavy supplies. The delivery guy shrugs and leaves and I then get to watch as DN takes his time and puts extra effort into block my driveway with the concrete and dump the fresh lumber into the roadside ditch. Luckily this meant he kept his mouth shut long enough that I could sit and read a book outside with the nice weather. As soon as he was done, he returned to spitting abuses. I then wheeled myself inside and texted my friend to come and put my supplies into place where they were safe from rain and the elements in general. This of course became further ammunition as DN thought it was hilarious that I would again have to waste someone's time and effort while I had all the helpfulness of a particularly smelly pile of crap. I'd already made it clear to my friend not to react, but I could tell with every interaction that it was getting more difficult for him. 
Still, he held to my request, if only because I had him deliver my complaints to the HOA of the neighborhood so he could see that I was not just planning to take this forever. I warned the guys who would be doing my construction about my neighbor and they all shrugged and said that they would surely be fine. They decided it was much harder to dismiss when he started throwing around slurs and serious insults because we all decided we would just ignore him. He either was a coward or actually had some brains to recognize that I had cameras watching the crew building the ramp so he never crossed over into my property to sabotage the construction. As soon as the ramp was done and I had some freedom to leave my house without having to crawl down the steps if I didn't have someone to carry me, he found something to really annoy me. So the way my porch is situated on the front of my house, I had to design the ramp a certain way to meet all the compliance standards. Because of that, it reached the edge of my property. DN decided this was perfect because it meant he could park his jacked up truck so that it blocked the end of the ramp and mostly be within his own property. This ruined my morning, I had plans and I was looking forward to finally being able to go down the ramp and get in my car. I got a setup so that I can drive with just my hands and meet my friends with no help. Because of him parking like this, I had to call one of them up and have them come meet me. DN was smug when he came out and saw me waiting at the top of those steps. He questioned why I wasn't using the wonderful ramp that people had built for me, he claimed that I should be very used to using things that I did nothing to earn for myself since my entire livelihood was supposedly based on other people's money and lives. He finally finished with the statement, All disabled people like you are just completely unnecessary, we don't want you around. I thought I was calm enough at the moment, but I realized that my response was still enough to reveal that he had bothered me. I replied, just remember that any active discrimination against disabled people is against the law. Even if you're just normally an a-hole, if you hurt accessibility then you're still breaking the law. This sent him on another rant cut short by my friend showing up. That night when I got back home, I taped some posters to DN's truck and his front door. His truck had not moved the whole day, but of course I'm the only lazy one that's still going out without the use of my legs. The posters are all about ADA regulations and our complaint to the HOA that reached him the next day that got him to move his truck. Although one of the first few times I made my way down the ramp, he ran out of his front door and came to meet me at the bottom. I wanted to just roll on, but he put his foot into my spokes and stood directly over me. I'm not one to submit to physical intimidation, especially in a man who let a beer gut form rather than keep up with his diet and fitness as he grew older, but I cannot deny that I was powerless in that situation. He again emphasized how much I ruined this neighborhood and said that he would make sure that I did not ruin his neighborhood or continue to disgust him. He danced around any direct threat of physical harm, again probably his brain coming out for just long enough to wonder if my cameras have mics. Small hint, they do, an assault does not require explicit physical harm to be mentioned. At this point I was getting close to suing the N. I felt I finally had the material to at least get harassment and assault charges to work out. That night though, he gave me the cherry on the cake. So those few moments where his thinking shone through must have been overcome by something else. I don't know if it was drugs or alcohol or just the usual rage, he destroyed my wheelchair ramp. My camera got footage of him mounting the curb and ramming the side of the thing with his truck. If there was any doubt that he did it on purpose when he came out yelling at the thing and kicking and spitting at it, he made it clear that he had very malicious intent. I would not expect a wheelchair ramp to hold up to that truck, but I was proud of the damage I saw dealt to the front end. I would hire the same contractors to repair it and first I would take care of DN once and for all. The evidence made sure that DN would be convicted, but it was really the testimonies that sealed the deal on quite how destructive of a personality this man was. For my testimony, I had a direction I didn't necessarily want to go with because I felt like it would be too exploitive in a case I already won. I also didn't really want to leverage something that has nothing to do with the N or his actions. Still, my lawyer insisted and when I heard just how many neighbors had testimonies of horrible aggressive behavior from the N, I took his advice. I remember the first time the N saw me after the discovery portion of the trial, the fact that he wouldn't meet my eyes was proof enough that he might think again about discriminating against anyone. I guess for that I am happy that my lawyer convinced me to testify the way that I did. My lawyer asked me how I became disabled as a way to establish my character and situation for the court, so I told him how I was injured in military service and received a purple heart upon arriving back to the states because of the injury I took in service to my country. 
The other testimonies were shocking as well. DN had blocked plenty of driveways and used physical intimidation to scare women and young adults throughout the neighborhood. He apparently did not do that to non-disabled men though. I assume because he knew he did not stand a chance if they called him on his BS. Though he still was plenty comfortable insulting these men just usually behind their backs. He had a dog that he hadn't trained well and he allowed to be very aggressive to other pets in the neighborhood. He would just claim that it was in the dog's nature and say that any complaints were invalid because their neighborhood does allow some of the more difficult breeds. They do specify that these dogs must be at a certain level of training that this dog certainly didn't meet. The charge of a hate crime was secured with the video footage of the wheelchair ramp destruction. The multiple charges of assault were secured by plenty of footage of him physically intimidating me paired with the testimony from my neighbors making it clear that it was within this man's character. He managed to avoid jail but any spare money he had lying around to fix his truck now has to go to an abundance of fines. He also has to pay for the repairs to the ramp. He'll be working through mandated community service hours so his truck will not be so idle on weekends and he must complete an anger management program as well. I won't be keeping up with his progress because the HOA was able to use these charges as justification to evict him. Our court system is not perfect but it gets it right sometimes. I only hope that it was not just because of my service because I want every disabled individual to get the same treatment. And by this ripe stars I hope that OP does not mean that every disabled person should go through the same hoops that he had to jump through. Because I do hope that no matter who you are you never have to deal with a neighbor like this. Anyway I'm really curious guys if you've ever had a horrible neighbor before what happened? Let us know in the comments how you dealt with any entitled crazy neighbors. Either way the next one is a malicious compliance story. About 14 years ago I went to work for a major petroleum company in Indianapolis. Over my four years there I applied myself and gained enough knowledge to be more knowledgeable than the most senior guy. Well one day stuff hit the fan and we were looking at a potentially major spill because the packing in a pump had failed. Nobody was doing anything and I'm a take charge kind of guy so I started barking orders. Now you gotta understand this would have been an EPA nightmare so there was no time for niceties. The other employees went and complained and I was called into the manager's office and was told about the complaints that I just barked orders and didn't ask nicely. He told me that I did the right thing and that next time if it wasn't going to be a major issue to give them enough rope to hang themselves. Bet it. So the next time I saw that they had the valve set up in such a way that two soap tanks for making asphalt emulsion would overflow and while not an EPA big deal it would bring scrutiny from the health environmental safety and security decision of our company. I mentioned to them that they might want to check the valve lineup because something didn't look right and well they told me to mind my own business as it was time for me to go home. I called the manager from my car and said you should probably start heading to the terminal because two tanks are about to overrun. I tried to tell them but they told me to mind my own business. I did not get halfway home before a neighbor to the facility came knocking on the door saying that liquid was overflowing two tanks. As the only first responder not involved in the incident I had to return to the facility and supervise cleanup until the big guns from corporate came in about three hours later. All were put on probation and then eventually fired for more screw ups. The beauty of this was that after the incident they were told to follow what I said explicitly and never again complained that someone does not say please and thank you in a crisis. They all hated me until the day they left. Why? Because I was the only person to take charge when no one else could. And the next one is a petty revenge story. My big brother recently got engaged to a lovely woman who makes him so happy. I'm thrilled for him especially because he had a string of terrible girlfriends and messy breakups before meeting this woman and he deserves someone good for him. Him. One of those terrible girlfriends went on to marry our dad and become our stepmom. She is, to put it as nicely and tactfully as possible, a B-I-T-C-H. When she found out my brother was engaged she first complained that she wasn't told at the same time he told his parents and siblings which girl he's your ex and then proceeded to try and make the whole thing about her. She talked openly about how this new girl is not as pretty or sociable as a certain past girlfriend of his. She called his new fiance to ask her questions to make sure that she was right for him. She started referring to herself as a stepmom in law to be. She wanted to be involved in the planning for the engagement party in which she wanted to make a speech. 
speech. It all made my brother and his fiancée very uncomfortable. I was very involved in planning the engagement party. Then my stepmom was so adamant that she had to be involved and my dad asked my brother to let her, so to keep the peace we let her, but I gave my stepmom random irrelevant things to deal with so she couldn't have any actual say in the event. I had this woman choosing between eight near identical shades of toupee for the ribbons to go around vases. I made it clear to her that her being invited to the event in the first place was a courtesy and that if she had any tact she would be ill that day. But of course she showed up, wearing a white floor length gown, unclear if it came with a headdress, so I asked some friends of mine to run interference to prevent her from talking to the couple. I also talked to the staff at the event and bribed them to make her day a little bit difficult. The photographer didn't manage to capture a single photo, then included her all day and asked to take the family photos while she happened to be in the bathroom. The bartenders gave her non-alcohol versions of every drink she ordered and spilled drinks on her twice. The waiters completely avoided going near her with canopies or drinks. And when she tried to make a speech, the microphone suddenly had unexplained feedback and stopped working and then the music started back up. Afterwards she complained about how bad the event was and everyone else seemed to have a good time though, especially the couple. And yeah, Ripe Stars, I gotta say, that has to be some of the weirdest family dynamic I've ever heard about in a Reddit story. That stepmom sounds like a really bad time if you ask me. However, props to OP for this kind of petty revenge. It was definitely deserved. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. A crazy entitled Karen neighbor and her friends trespass on my property to swim at the lake. She ends up calling the police on my children claiming that they are swimming there illegally and that she owns the land. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the story. I own a lake property and part of what I own is a good chunk of the lake. I really enjoy basically owning half a lake because it gives me and my family a lot of freedom to have fun on nice days. While the lake and area right before it is considered my private property, I'm fairly relaxed when it comes to other people wanting to use the lake or area right at the edge. I did not want to be one of those people that had all this area and then refused to let anybody else use it on really hot days or worse even charge for it. I came up with a system that I felt was pretty fair. If somebody in the neighborhood wanted to use the lake, the biggest thing was that they had to ask me first. Depending on what they wanted to do, I would usually say yes, but sometimes I had to tell people no. I had a group that wanted to camp at the lake edge and I wasn't comfortable with them staying overnight on the property. Most of the time though, it was families wanting to give their kids a break from the heat by having a dip in the water and were gone usually within a couple of hours. My second rule was that they had to clean up any messes or they wouldn't get my permission a second time. I was not about to be playing cleanup to a bunch of people. Now you might be thinking right off the bat this is a bad system, letting anybody on the property but for a few years it worked without any issues. The signs claiming that it was private property stayed up of course and when I told people no, they understood. But then one day, my daughter had friends over and they wanted to go for a swim. Since they are only 11, I wanted to sit outside where I could keep an eye on them. At the same time, staying far away enough to give them their privacy to talk about things and stuff without me hearing. That was when I noticed a group of about 10 people hanging out near the edge of the lake with a barbecue and some people in the water. The girls went to have fun and while I kept an eye on them, I was trying to figure out how to approach this situation. Since it had never happened before, I was worried about confronting them in a too aggressive manner. Also deciding if calling the police would even be warranted or just make me look like an a-hole. And by the way guys, just to quickly interject here, if people trespass on your private property, you are never the a-hole for calling the police. Trespassing is a serious offense, at least in my book. Anyway, the decision got made for me when the girls ran over to me, with my daughter crying and incoherently mumbling into my torso. Once I got her calmed down, she told me that the woman in charge, who I will now call Karen, told her that she had to get away from the lake or she would call the cops. Protective dad mode activated and looking like an ass be damned. So then I marched right up to Karen, ready to give her a piece of my mind. First I told the girls to make sure they stay by the house because I didn't want them following me to Karen. I have read too many bad stories online and she had a hot grill near her. I did not care about my own safety as I was gonna make sure that Karen was gone. 
As I got closer, I noticed that they had dumped their garbage all over the ground of my property as well. Me, you need to get your friends, pack up your crap, clean your mess and then get the hell out of here. Karen, this is a free country. Just because you're a man doesn't mean that you can tell me what to do. Me, this might be a free country, but this is private property and you are trespassing. I own this property and I want you to leave right now. Karen, you're lying. I see plenty of people out here all the time. Me, that's because they ask my permission and I allow it. You, on the other hand, will never get permission to be on my land after making my daughter cry. This is your only warning to get off the property and stay off of it. Karen, that little girl was indecent and a witch. I was here first and I want her to stay away or I would call the cops on her. She did not notice the signs, I guess. If she is going to start trouble about this, I'm gonna call the cops about her and you. She starts calling the police talking about how people are trying to kick her out of her lake property because she is a woman. I guess suddenly it is her property out of nowhere, despite us both knowing that that is a pile of poop. I tell her again that I am the owner of the property and the police are clearly gonna see who is on the wrong when they arrive. She just smirks and tells me that we will see if the police side with an aggressive man or a poor innocent woman. She really believed being a woman meant that they would just believe her with no evidence that the property was hers. The police showed up and Karen started going on a rant about my daughter and her friends harassing them. That they were swimming in her lake and wants the police to arrest all three of the girls. Then demands that I get arrested as well because my presence is threatening to her and I'm also now trespassing. The cops are very confused about the whole situation and even more so once I show them that this is my house and lake property. That Karen came with her friends and were the ones trespassing while my daughter just wanted to swim with her friends. The police called over my daughter and her friends to get their side of the story as well. The police explained to Karen that just because she was there first does not make the lake her property. That she, in fact, is actually the one trespassing with her friends and they all need to vacate and go back home. Karen gets furious about this information and runs over to my daughter before smacking her right in the eye. The police restrained Karen on the ground and put her into handcuffs after she committed assault and battery right in front of them on a minor. The entire time on the ground she is yelling and calling my daughter a witch and a liar. One officer is making sure that I don't get too close to Karen because he can tell how angry I am getting from her comments and actions. They get her into the back of a car and that's enough for the other friends to get out of there before they also get arrested. I demand before she is taken away to press charges for the trespassing, assault and battery. I started yelling too at some point but I cannot pinpoint exactly when. Luckily my daughter was fine and just needed to ice the area to reduce how swollen it was gonna end up from that smack. I wanted Karen in jail for what she did to my daughter but it wasn't up to me obviously. She was about to get off with probation and community service then she decided to start insulting the judge and calling him an idiot because she clearly had done nothing wrong. I know zero about the legal system but I do know that insulting the judge is a bad idea. Her sentence got raised to actual prison time and ended up behind bars. I still have the same policy with my property and other than that one incident things went back to running smoothly. I just know if I ever catch a trespasser again I'm gonna call the police first thing and hopefully avoid another situation like this one. And yeah ripe stars I gotta say these Karens are just getting crazier and crazier and if you're not careful they just love to claim that they own your property. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.